Hey, Homestead Prepper. This video is going to be about how to change out a starter on a uh, 2006 Nissan Titan. And the starter is up underneath that manifold right there. They couldn't make it easy on you, so I'm going to go through what it takes to get that out of there. I'm sure uh, this, what I'm doing here is going to apply to a 04, I believe up to a 2015 Titan or 04 or 05 up to 2015 Armada. So it should be pretty much the same procedure. Okay, well here goes. Okay, the first thing you need to do when you uh, do any kind of mechanic work on a vehicle is you need to undo the battery terminal. Now, I'm going to be taking this one off. This is the negative, and you can see where it says negative right there. Positive one, you can't really see it that well. But uh, I'll be undoing that and making sure that this can't come back and touch this and energize it. Because you don't want to be fooling around with anything uh, electrical and short it out. It'll, it'll give you a little moment of excitement and you never know that fan may come on over there. Now some people say you should take the positive one off and leave that one hooked up. And some people say you take this one off and leave the other one hooked up. I, I guess if you really wanted to be anal you could take them both off and take the battery and stick it on your porch. But uh, but, but anyway you, you, need to, you need to remove at least one of those terminals before you start the job. Okay we're going to start with taking that cover off right there. This is uh, 10 millimeter bolts. That one's out. You can get a little cup or something to put those in. I'm going to put them in my pocket for right now. And we're going to take this off. We have now done the hardest thing we have got started. So we'll put this over here. Take this octopus looking thing off of here to loosen that up. I'm pretty sure that's a 5 16 That loosens up. That's going to pull off. It's a little dark in here, but I'm just taking a, a representation of where all these hoses go. So, okay, got those hoses done. This, I did this, and then I did this, and I'm not going to take that off. I'm just going to take this little octopus looking thing, and we're going to set that over there. I guess the fun part begins. Okay, you got to disconnect that fuel line, and you can just use some of these things right here. They're pretty cheap, and I've got it inserted in there. And what you do is you push it in, you push forward, and it should pull right off, just like that. So put that over there. I may put some tape around that so no garbage gets in it, and this just. comes off. So, pretty simple. Okay, we need to pull these plugs out. I've got a pair of pliers here. That one's already undone. There's one right here. It'll pull out pretty easy. Well, so far. Okay, well, Nobody's mentioned that uh, what it takes to take that throttle body off is this little S 2.5 or 25, whatever it is. It just happened to be in my tool set, thank goodness, where I would have to put all this back together and run up to the tool place and get that little thing to take these off. And I don't like to use the air ratchet on stuff like this until I've already broken it loose. It's going to fight me. Okay, you want to blow out any debris that might be up around in here. I used a uh, leaf blower to blow all that stuff off. There was leaves and crap, and I don't want that in my engine. 
so blow it out all right this needs to come off remember that of course it doesn't want to come off this little baby needs to come off here too and just slap it down and you got another hose right here that that has to come off so we'll take that off okay you got 10 bolts on the manifold I got a little U joint I'm using. All right, we've got a um, zip tie holding that on. I guess we could undo it from the back, but that is attached to that manifold, and that's going to have to come off of there before we pull that thing out. Okay, it's the moment of truth. I believe I have everything undone, and what you do, now this is uh, plastic. But you kind of tap it. I mean, you can stick a big old pry bar under there, but uh, I want to kind of work it loose, and oh, it just it just comes off. I, I did loosen it up before I, you know, showed you on the camera. But anyway, that that's how I did it. And it just popped right off. So let's see, we can pull this thing out. Oh, and there it is. And there's this hose on the back and a lot of people just lay that thing right right there so let's take a look and boy that's what we've been that's my goal right there is that starter now I need to cover these things up right here I don't want to get any crap down in there so let's get that done and then uh, we'll see what a bear it is to pull that starter out Now, like I said, we don't want anything to fall down in there, especially a bolt or, you know, dust or anything like that. So these are just these shop dolls. I love these things. These are great. And I'm also going to take the precaution and we're going to put tape over it. Now, I know that's uh, probably a little overkill for all of y'all, but, you know, this is the way I'm going to do it. So... actually going to need two pieces to cover the whole thing with this duct tape. Do the same thing, do the same thing to the other side and we can get started on what we came here for at starter. Okay there's our little puppy right there. I just need to undo that bolt right there. There's a, a plug right here it plugs in over there and there's just two bolts so and they're 14 millimeter okay let's uh, see about putting the new one in okay uh, what you want to do is do a side-by-side -side comparison and make sure you're putting the same thing in there because sometimes the guys at the counter make a mistake or uh, if you ordered it online you know you can have a mistake happen right there but it looks pretty much the same. Uh, I forgot to mention that that's a 12 millimeter bolt right there. So, and what I did is I took one of the bolts off of the back and made sure it's screwed in the new one. That way when you're trying to fill around with it and you can't get the bolt to come in, then you know, you'll, you'll know. So, okay, well they look the same. So let's, uh, let's put that one in. Okay, y'all see all that trash down there? You also see this wire? right here that's a little skin I'm gonna tape that up but I'm gonna take my shot back right here and we're gonna clean all that stuff out so I recommend you clean it out before you put stuff back in so let's uh, let's get that going <laughs>
okay I got the new one in there I still need to connect this little piece right here to that right there but it's got to go around the back so uh, what I did is this little terminal right here what I did is I put just a very light smearing of grease on it now, I didn't put any on the threads or the nut or anything like that but just to give it some good connection maybe keep it from oxidizing so okay and this was uh, what I used and I'm talking just just a smidge all right well let's get it hooked up okay I forgot to mention you gotta don't forget to put that cover back on right there I just need to thread those bolts from the back and like I said hook up that little connector right there and it just it just sits right up in there you don't have to hold it and fiddle with it it has like its own little I don't know little cradle I absolutely love uh, that little mini ratchet right there it's great okay we got it all installed and guys I can't stress enough that if you <laughs> forget to hook this little wire up here you're gonna have to take everything back apart or try and fish it out it's gonna be a real bear so all right and it's taken me mm, I guess about two and a half hours to get to this point right here now that's you know setting everything up and you know trying to make a video too so uh, if you're not trying to make a video, I'm sure it could be expedited and go a lot faster and easier. And I just want to share with you all, whenever I pull something apart, I kind of lay it out in the order that I took it off. And that way I just, you know, put the stuff in reverse. So instead of just throwing it all in one little pile and trying to figure out what goes where. This uh, manifold just popped right into place. And what I did, instead of trying to work the bolts in there by hand and drop them down in that valley and have to take everything apart. I put those three on there and I put the three over there on there and then I slid the manifold in there and it just lined right up and then I tightened everything up by hand. And I was able to put these bolts in and the ones in the back I was able to get my hands in there and get them started. Okay if I were to do this job again I would remove all these hoses and stuff first and then worry about these little uh, connections at the injector because it'd be a lot easier to get your hands in there once all that other stuff is out of the way instead of trying to do that first okay now we want to make sure we put this little doodad back on and this is our fuel line we want it just it just pushes on I didn't really show y'all just slid in uh, real well on how to remove that but basically you just slide this around here push that up in there around it push this forward push this push these together and it just pulls off the guys just a little tip when I put stuff back together I don't run the air gun I put that stuff in there by hand and get it started if you run the air gun trying to get it started then you could strip this stuff out you get it nice and started if you can't get your hand in there you can stick a piece of uh, fuel line hose sometimes and you can uh, get it started that way okay <laughs> if you notice I'm missing my little 2.5 right here and that's because it fell down in there into the abyss of never never land it'll take the whole truck apart and never ever find it but uh, fortunately I had these metric wrenches right here and these these will work and like I said this is a 2.5 so if you can do one of these jobs you might want to get something that you can't drop down in there and lose like that little bit that was on that if I were to do that again I'd probably put some black tape around it and uh, make sure they wouldn't come out use some of that stuff right there okay if you're looking for that right there uh, that's because I forgot to put this little cover on right here so that's what it'll look like okay um, I still got to put the cover on there but I know if I put the cover on there there will be something that needs to be undone and 
actually there's a couple hose fittings that need I need to clamp on there but I'm gonna go ahead and give it the smoke test and we'll see uh, we'll see what it does here we go Well, I'm going to give you guys a little uh, overview of the tools I use to get the job done here. Uh, now that is a uh, Craftsman tool set. I know you pros out there, y'all like Snap-on and Mac and Macco and all that. Uh, but I'm just a uh, home mechanic and Craftsman has served me well for many, many years. I've been very happy with them. Um, and what I like about this kit, this was actually a door buster I paid $150 for. And it's got everything, and it's nice and organized. Comes with its own case. You know, if I was, uh, you know, had a, a shop, and I'd have a rolling toolbox and all that. But uh, it's got a little bit of everything in there. You'll always need some specialty tools, usually, to do a job. There'll be something come up like that little 2.5 thing. This one, of course, had it. Of course, now I'm missing it because I dropped it in the bowels of the truck. But uh, basically, to get the job done, uh, those shop towels, that uh, tape, a little bit of grease, of course, need some oil for the uh, air ratchet, a blow gun, and I had to use that uh, shop back right there to clean everything out, and you know, quarter inch, half inch, and three eighths inch drive ratchets. Uh, this U joint was really handy, 10 millimeter. 13 millimeter, 14 millimeter, 5 sixteenths, and a 10 millimeter quarter inch drive. A screwdriver. This was used to take the battery terminal off. I really like this for undoing those bolts there in the back. Of course, I had to break it with this uh, big 14 millimeter one. That's a crescent, um, crescent wrench, and channel locks is what I meant to say. Crescent brand channel locks. This, I don't know what this is, but this was very handy too. So was that. And it's good I had this um, 2.5, this little thing right here, to put that throttle body back on. And this was the uh, thing I used to remove the fuel. So these were very inexpensive. That, that's one thing I did have to buy for the job. And this right here, guys, I couldn't be happier with this. This is uh, really awesome. It fits in tight little places. Now, it doesn't have a lot of torque, but a lot of times you don't need a lot of torque to undo bolts or, you know, just get them going. Um, I went up to Northern Tool and tried to get an Ingersoll Rand, but they were sold out. I noticed that Ingersoll Rand is made in China right now. So, anyway, this is, uh, you know, well, it is what it is. It was about $30, and I think it was well worth it for the occasional use I'm going to use it for. Okay, guys, well, I hope that uh, that helped. I hope you got something out of the video. And I, uh, I saved a boatload of money. And, oh, and just uh, FYI, from start to finish, of course, I still need to pick these tools up. I, um, I spent about three and a half hours on the job. So, and that's, that's making a video, too. Okay, homestead proper out.